Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku or in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Before I get into Floyd Mayweather against Bernard Hopkins, let's just talk about technique. Let's just talk about the mental aspect of the game just for a second to set the context. Now on April the 30th, 1976, Muhammad Ali fought a Philadelphia fighter named Jimmy Young. Right now, in the fight, and this fight to me is one of the best tactical fights I have ever seen. In the fight, the boxers come out. Now you remember George Foreman against Ali in an earlier fight had his foot on the gas right back Ali up against the ropes was trying to pummel Ali up against the ropes and Ali unveiled a strategy called the rope a dope that's what Ali called it right had his hands up had Foreman box himself out Ali ends up stopping Foreman and takes his title now before that fight right a few years before actually Ali then unbeaten is up against Joe Fraser, right? Ali was the boxer, Fraser was the slugger, right? The pressure fighter. Fraser is applying pressure for all 15 rounds. There's a moment in that fight where Fraser's pressure breaks Ali. Ali gets hit on the jaw as he tries to back out, gets dropped. Right, Fraser gives Ali his first loss. If you look at the replay of the fight, the fight's actually not that close. Right, so we know fighters, elite fighters, thought the way to beat Ali was by pressure. Enter Jimmy Young. Right, Jimmy Young, simply put, is one of boxing's more underappreciated fighters. Understand, this is a guy who in the 1970s, beat George Foreman, beat Ron Lyle, had a draw with Ernie Shavers. In my opinion, he beat Muhammad Ali. In fact, let me go further. If you want to see Ali get out thought in a fight and beaten, if you want to see Ali on his worst day when another fighter completely outworks him. Don't look at Ali's fight against Joe Fraser, the first fight. Look at this fight against Jimmy Young. I'm just here to tell you Ali lost the fight. I know in history they're going to say Ali by unanimous decision, right? Ali lost this Jimmy Young fight. More importantly, for our purposes here in analyzing Mayweather Hopkins, just to understand what happened in the fight, right? Ali goes over to the ropes, just like he did against George Foreman. Jimmy Young, who had studied Ali, who was a tactician, looks at Ali go over to the ropes. Jimmy Young doesn't go over to the ropes, right? Ali had no dope to rope, right? When they're in the middle of the ring, Jimmy Young puts his hands up to protect his face. The problem was, of course, Ali never went to the body. Ali wasn't a body puncher. Jimmy Young knew that. The fight has, in my opinion, what's Remarkable footage, some of the most remarkable footage of Ali's entire career. Ali is so frustrated by Jimmy Young's refusal to take the lead in the fight, right? You know, Ali, counterpuncher, defensive wizard, 
you know, uh, like to have his back up on the ropes at this point in his career, right, the mid-70s. Ali is so frustrated by the fact that Young won't lead the dance that Ali walks over to the side of the ropes and literally motions to Jimmy Young in the middle of the ring to come over and fight him. In my opinion, Jimmy Young had broken Ali, right? Ali didn't know what to do with a guy who tactically refused to play the role of Joe Frazier, Sonny Liston, and George Foreman, right? In my opinion, that's Ali's worst moment in the ring. Let's talk about the scoring of the fight. Understand that if you go right now, in fact, I'm going to click on the fight right here. If you go to boxing scene right now and look up this fight, you're going to see what was obvious to my dad and I as we watched the fight in the 1970s. And that was that Ali lost the fight by a wide margin, right? Understand the Associated Press scored the fight. 69 to 66 for Jimmy Young. If you go to boxing scene and click on the link for the fight, you're going to see that the decision was loudly booed, right? A great tactician, even against a great fighter, if he has the right game plan, can literally take away the best parts of that tactician's game. Right? That is exactly what Bernard Hopkins has been doing his entire career. Now, styles make fights. <clears throat> no question about it. Online here, I've said that I believe certain styles would give Floyd Mayweather a hard time. Right? One of the styles is Amir Khan's style. A fighter with length, a fighter with hand speed, who can work behind a jab, who can stay outside, right? That fighter could force Floyd Mayweather, who's only 5'8", to try to come find him, right? And so, you know, the uh, point is simply... YouTube Nation has responded. The consensus on YouTube Nation, as it often is, is that I'm crazy, right? That Amir Khan just doesn't have the head movement, the ability to shoulder roll, to adequately defend himself against Floyd Mayweather. That Amir Khan simply doesn't have the chance to deal with Floyd Mayweather's crisp counters. That Amir Khan doesn't have the discipline to stay on his horse behind a jab and force Mayweather to try to come forward and to find him in the ring, right? And that Amir Khan, quite frankly, isn't the kind of patient fighter to actually be able to leverage his power against Floyd Mayweather, right? Amir Khan is a bit of a pattern fighter. And according to YouTube Nation, he might lack the patience to do what's necessary in the small window that a great defensive opponent like Floyd's going to give you to actually land the punch at the right time to get to Floyd Mayweather. Well, just imagine... If, right, Amir Khan actually had head movement, actually was able to tuck his head behind his chin, had the kind of head movement where hitting him firmly in the head was hard to do. What if Amir Khan? didn't have a fragile chin, but actually had one of the best chins in history, right? The kind of chin where 
he had never been knocked out. What if Amir Khan wasn't five eight and a half, but was actually six one? What if Amir Khan, instead of getting off the game plan, having the portion of the fight where, like the Danny Garcia fight starting in the third round, where he actually gets involved in a shootout, rather than that lack of discipline, what if Amir Khan actually had the discipline, was renowned for his discipline in carrying out a game plan for 12 rounds, just like Bernard Hopkins did against the then unbeaten Kelly Pavlik, just like Bernard Hopkins did against Tavares Cloud. In fact, don't Kelly Pavlik and Tavares Cloud hit a lot harder than Floyd Mayweather. Hasn't Hopkins, with a great chin, been in the ring? By the way, that was my Marco Rubio moment. Hasn't he been in the ring with much heavier punchers than Floyd Mayweather. Now Bernard Hopkins has said that he's willing to meet Mayweather at middleweight. That's what they should call the fight. The meeting at middle. Right? Styles make fights. In a matchup between these two, and I personally feel that Floyd Mayweather might be the best fighter I've seen, right? Um, let me go one step beyond Roger Mayweather. Mayweather claims, this is Roger, that Ray Robinson's the best fighter in history. I've looked at Ray Robinson films, and I'll say here online unequivocally, Floyd Mayweather is a better defensive fighter than Ray Robinson. No question Robinson's better offensively. Right, I'm not here to say Floyd beats Ray Robinson. What I am say to, uh, here to say is Floyd certainly has a chance to beat Ray Robinson. Right, That fight to me is a toss-up. That would be an interesting fight. Now as great as Floyd Mayweather is, and I really do consider him to be historically one of the very best ever in the sport, if a fight is signed between Mayweather and Bernard Hopkins, I'll be rolling with Bernard Hopkins, who I would expect to be the underdog following Mayweather's destruction of Canelo Alvarez. Right? Understand, Canelo doesn't move like Hopkins. Doesn't have the appreciation for spacing like Hopkins. He doesn't bring in the ring the kind of tactical brilliance that a Jimmy Young or a Bernard Hopkins would bring into the ring. Let's talk about the style matchup. You remember Mayweather against Victor Ortiz, right? Mayweather's lounging out around the ropes. Victor Ortiz is following him around like a puppy, as many Mayweather opponents do. Right, Mayweather is as comfortable up on the ropes as another great fighter, Muhammad Ali. Right, Mayweather loves when you're making his life for him easy. He gets to lean on the ropes, rest his legs. You're in front of him. He knows where to find you. You're always coming forward. Fill in the blank. Ortiz, Cotto, Guerrero. Right? Well, what happens if he's fighting a guy? like Bernard Hopkins, who will watch Mayweather go over to the ropes and who won't follow him over there. What happens when Mayweather finds himself playing defense against no one? Let's talk about length. 
you know, this fight wouldn't start until Mayweather found a way to counteract the longer reach that Bernard Hopkins would have. Because Hopkins certainly would be pumping a jab, keeping Mayweather on the outside. Right? There's a height dynamic here, folks. 5'8 against 6'1. A longer reach against a shorter reach. A bigger man accustomed to fighting bigger opponents against a shorter man. Right? Hopkins would force Mayweather to fight the fight on his front foot. Right? This would be really a tactical masterpiece between the sport's two best tacticians. Also, let's get real for a second. In my opinion, given that Mayweather couldn't knock out Canelo, in fact, let's look at Mayweather's power. Right, Mayweather has only knocked out one fighter in the last few fights. And that's Victor Ortiz after a break when Victor had his hands down and was looking at referee Joe Cortez. Right now, I'm just here making the argument that if Mayweather couldn't knock out a less mobile opponent like Canelo, right? How is Mayweather going to have any shot at the knockout against Bernard Hopkins? If you, the gambler, know that Mayweather doesn't have a shot at knocking out Bernard Hopkins, right? Understand the only guy recently to put Hopkins on the canvas is Jean Pascal at light heavy. And understand, Pascal is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. Right? If you know Mayweather isn't going to drop Bernard Hopkins, doesn't that make this fight easy to bet on? The only guy who would have a shot at a knockout in this fight would be Bernard Hopkins, not Floyd Mayweather. You wouldn't have to worry about Mayweather by knockout in any round, right? You could hedge whatever play you have on Hopkins by simply taking Mayweather by decision. Right now, I know in the book I wrote a few years ago, How to Bet on Boxing, shameless plug. I know that I've criticized fighters, in fact, here in countless fight videos, who are older for trying to lose weight to fight at a lighter division. Most recently, I criticized Eddie Chambers, and then Eddie Chambers went out and lost the fight, right? He had lost weight to fight at Cruiser. I said, bet against Eddie, and Eddie lost the fight. When I mentioned an older fighter before, I was talking about a fighter in his 30s, right? Let's say mid-30s. Here, Bernard Hopkins is not only in his 40s, he's in his late 40s, <laughs> right? right? And so this is an older fighter by even the standards of guys fighting in their mid-30s, right? Hopkins hasn't been 35 for something like 13 years, more than a decade. And here Hopkins would be dropping at least 10 pounds to fight Floyd Mayweather. But you need to understand who Bernard Hopkins is. This is a guy who hasn't had a donut for over a decade. This is a guy who has always kept himself in remarkable shape. His idol is Marvelous Marvin Hagler. The big thing with Hagler was discipline. Bernard Hopkins has been one of the most disciplined fighters in history. Like Floyd Mayweather, I believe if Bernard Hopkins had to fight two weeks from now, at, let's say, 172 pounds, I believe Bernard Hopkins could make that weight and be in fight shape. So for this kind of senior citizen, especially against an opponent who has never fought at middleweight, in fact, let's get real here. Floyd Mayweather weighed in at 150 and a half against Canelo. Mayweather in interviews has said that he woke up the morning of the fight weighing less than 147 pounds. This is that rare fight where the weight loss might actually not hurt Bernard against a smaller fighter like Floyd Mayweather. Right? So to me, 
a guy who feels that strategy and styles are everything. A guy who has always thought, from the moment the fight ended, that Jimmy Young beat Ali. Right? A guy who believes that if you're a fighter who studies the other fighter and has figured out, like Ray Beltran did against Ricky Burns, that when the other guy is in a rope-a-dope shell, you don't even have to throw punches. There doesn't have to be a part in the fight, as there was in the Mayweather-Ortiz fight, where Ortiz is headbutting Mayweather because Mayweather is so defensively gifted and is frustrating him up on the ropes. If that's the case, what's Ortiz doing on the ropes? Right? Why do you have to be the one pushing the action? A defensive wizard like Hopkins against Floyd Mayweather would be something radically different than the recent Mayweather fights we've seen. Mayweather himself, with all due respect to an obvious Hall of Famer, Mayweather himself called Oscar De La Hoya a basic fighter. Have you seen the Ricky Hatton fight where Ricky's up on his toes dancing for 12 rounds? I haven't, right? Mayweather's been fighting other than one Manuel Marquez, and we'll do a carve-out, and there was a size difference in that fight. And the bigger man won. But Mayweather, other than Marquez, has been fighting guys on their front foot who have sought to pin him up against the ropes. Just like Ali was fighting fighters like that in the 70s. Aren't there other strategies that could be explored by opponents? And if the opponent has a great chin and can operate behind a long jab and still in his late 40s has great foot movement, couldn't Hopkins hang around in that fight and steal a lot of rounds without ever actually having to box Floyd Mayweather. Hopkins would bring the best parts of Amir Khan to the gunfight with more height and length than Khan, presumably more punching power since he's the heavier man, and the kind of discipline, technique, and tactics that have exemplified his career. So put me among those who would love to see Mayweather against Hopkins. And let me just say, I would be taking Hopkins as my primary play in that fight, hedged with Mayweather by decision. The hedge would really be just a fiscal precaution because I would fully expect Bernard Hopkins to win that fight. Understand both of these men are master tacticians. Understand that both of these men certainly should be what they would call in baseball first ballot Hall of Famers. Right? But understand Bernard Hopkins is a master tactician. Both of these guys are over 35. Neither of them would beat the prime versions of themselves, right? I think the height gap would simply be too much. I think Bernard Hopkins can at least match Floyd Mayweather inside. Very few can. This Hall of Famer can. I think Bernard Hopkins would have the advantage outside because of length. And both guys, of course, are cognizant of timing. Hopkins wouldn't fall into the traps that someone like Robert Guerrero did, right? Neither you nor I have seen a fight involving Bernard Hopkins, where he's been hit constantly and methodically by a straight right hand like Mayweather doled out against Robert Guerrero. I like Hopkins in the fight against a fighter who might be the best ever, right? Styles make fights. Size matters in boxing. Old boxing adage. A good big man beats a good little man. I know Mayweather's been beating guys bigger than him. But not a guy this 
savvy. This fight is very different. I've heard you, YouTube Nation, talk about Janady Golovkin. Talk about Arislandy Lara as opponents for Floyd Mayweather, right? I feel this fight with Hopkins is different than those fights. I'll agree Janady Golovkin would have a shot, absolutely, right? He might physically overwhelm Floyd Mayweather. But I'm more intrigued by a tactically brilliant fight like the Jimmy Young Ali fight. And as I said before, if you want to see Ali at his worst, dig up a tape of that fight, right? Give yourself a treat. I believe it's here on YouTube. All I'm saying is Bernard Hopkins brings that dynamic to a matchup against Floyd Mayweather. If this fight happens, trust me, I will be in Vegas for it. Let me hear from you. I think Hopkins can beat Mayweather. Of course, everyone here knows that I don't believe any fighter is unbeatable. I took Chad Dawson against Bernard Hopkins, right? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for putting up with all this rambling. Until next time.